Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Canadian Prairie. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. I was just this close to calling you guys the Corn Belt. Here's a look at what we're looking at, just an overview picture over the next week. We'll be looking at mild conditions across the prairie, uh, dry conditions, especially across central and southern Alberta into southern Saskatchewan, localized periods of, uh, you know, fire weather risks in there. Uh, we'll be watching for um, coastal flow to bring like, excess precipitation across British Columbia uh, all the way up toward the uh, Alberta border there. And then as we head into the April, April uh, 25th through the 28th time frame, we'll be watching for an area of low pressure to track north of the prairie, uh, bringing some precipitation to uh, portions of central Saskatchewan and then down into uh, central Manitoba as well. Temperatures this morning beginning to warm quickly into the mid-teens. We'll be getting close to 20 degrees in several locations today. And as we go ahead and put the satellite into motion, we can see a, really a beautiful day evolving for a lot of people across the prairie. It looks like Alberta seeing a ton of sunshine uh, this morning. Manitoba, a lot of sunshine there. We've got a patch of clouds here making their way through southwestern uh, and south central portions of Saskatchewan, but even southeastern Saskatchewan getting some sunshine this morning as well. Uh, beneath those clouds there in south central and southwestern Saskatchewan, we do have some showers falling there. And as we head through the afternoon, we will see some clouds developing and maybe some showers, maybe even a few thunderstorms developing across the prairie. Now, this is a look at the uh, the forecast precipitation here as we get to 7 p.m. this evening uh, on this Friday evening. And again, scattered showers, maybe a few thunderstorms, especially across central and southern portions of Saskatchewan, but all the way back into northern Alberta uh, as possible as well. As we look at the upper level pattern here, just evolving over the next several days, uh, we're going to watch for a ridge to eventually uh, set up here on the backside of this storm system here, April 25th through the 28th, and that's going to lead to another period of warmer conditions across the prairie. So we go ahead and bring it back. This is what we're looking at right now. We've almost got three troughs right now, three areas of low pressure uh, in the west of, or I guess, south of the, um, the Aleutian Islands there, across uh, the Northwest Territories, and then over toward the Hudson Bay. We'll take the drawings off here and just kind of slowly creep through the next several days, heading into uh, the April 25th, 26th time frame. That would be this weekend into early next week. Uh, this is then where we'll watch that area of low pressure, that little trough make its way through the prairie, bringing precipitation primarily north of uh, the prairie as we head through the 25th through the 28th. And then as we get on the back side of that, heading into the last days of April, the first few days of May, we'll be looking for uh, warmer conditions to return to the prairie. As we look at the uh, next seven days precipitation total here in terms of an anomaly, again, a lot of brown shading here uh, across the prairie, especially uh, across portions of southern Alberta, and that's where uh, the best threat for any localized wildfire risk is going to be uh, over the next week or so. Uh, but really, you have to head north of Highway 16 to get into the white shading, which is just near average. So uh, dry-ish <laughs> or, or, or dry conditions continuing for just about everyone here over the next week or so, even though there will be some opportunities for some precipitation. So let's take a longer range look then, looking at the European model. We can kind of bring it back here, quickly go through this afternoon. Again, we already understand the chance for uh, some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms, uh, especially across this area. Uh, maybe even some snow flurries as you head well off to the north. As we head into Saturday, Saturday morning, midday Saturday now, getting into Saturday afternoon and evening, a quiet day across the prairie. The exception being maybe across far southern Manitoba where we could see some showers popping up, maybe a few thunderstorms in that area. Uh, as we get through Saturday afternoon and evening. Now as we start to head into Sunday and beyond, this is when we start to see that next area of low pressure emerging across northern Alberta. This is Saturday night heading into sunrise Sunday morning, midday Sunday, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday evening now. So from Saturday night into Sunday night, it makes its way from northern Alberta into northern Saskatchewan, crossing into northern Manitoba as we head into Sunday night and Monday morning. And again, just bringing some light precipitation to the region, generally kind of north of this line uh, is where that precipitation really falls. The measurable precipitation is going to be. So again, uh, kind of missing out as we look at the area here from central and southern Alberta into uh, southern uh, Saskatchewan. We'll take the drawings off then. Uh, let this play a few more days into the middle of the week, show you that we are, you know, continuing to be relatively quiet. We see another weak little disturbance making its way quickly from west to east across the prairie with uh, very little precipitation uh, as the, the air mass just does not support a lot in the way of uh, uh, real heavy precipitation across the prairie. We will be dealing with windy conditions again at times as these disturbances track through the region. We'll go ahead and kind of look at some of the days with the stronger wind gusts as we head through the afternoon and evening today. Winds gusting 40 to uh, 45 uh, kilometers per hour here across portions of central Alberta into southwestern Saskatchewan. We'll then head into the afternoon and evening on Saturday, seeing those winds even stronger. This is when we could see winds gusting here 50 
60, perhaps local gusts of 70 kilometers per hour uh, Saturday afternoon and evening across uh, this region here uh, of, um, you know, central and western and southern Alberta and then kind of the, the western, or I'm sorry, the eastern half of Saskatchewan. So uh, this is where we could be talking about maybe some local uh, wildfire risk popping up here as we deal with some of these warm, dry air mass days uh, with very strong winds gusting across the region. Uh, so let's go a little bit further. Let's take it into Sunday. Watch those winds gusting on Sunday. Uh, even stronger than on Saturday. This is going to be a very blustery day as this disturbance makes its way through. Uh, we could see winds gusting anywhere from 60 to 80 kilometers at times across uh, parts of Highway 16, uh, central portions of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and even into Manitoba, those winds gusting 40 to 60 kilometers per hour. So as this disturbance makes its way through, winds continue to gust. Uh, Friday, uh, looking at those winds gusting 30 to 40. Saturday looking at 40 to 50 and then perhaps 60 to 70 uh, as we get into Sunday uh, again with the highest winds being across this corridor. Total precipitation over the next week watching it accumulate here in loop form again over the next several days we're just looking for these pop-up showers pop-up thunderstorms bringing very light precipitation in very isolated fashion most people remaining dry as we talk about the next 48 hours or so. As we go uh, from Saturday night into Monday, we watch that storm system track across northern portions of the prairie. The more significant measurable precipitation uh, generally falling north of Highway 16, and we're still talking about anywhere from 5 to maybe 15 millimeters of precipitation. Really, no one uh, across the provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba going to get soaked by any stretch of the imagination over the next week. Snowfall, we're looking at the probability of an inch or more of snow. Uh, and again, that's going to be less than 3 centimeters of snow. Uh, or right about three and a half centimeters. I'm sorry, doing the math on the fly in my head. Uh, but regardless, not looking for accumulating snow across uh, much of the prairie. You'd have to head well into northern Alberta, northern Saskatchewan, and far northern Manitoba, uh, closer to the Northwest Territories border to look for any kind of accumulating snow over the next week. The reason for that, well, we're not really dropping below freezing in many locations over the next week as we enjoy, again, another period of warmth and, again, uh, perhaps even warming up more as we head into the middle of next week, looking at the potential for uh, highs near 20 degrees again uh, in Calgary, looking at for a high near 20 tomorrow in Edmonton, that high of 19, and then again near 19 as we get to midweek next week. Regina, you could see some 20-degree days in there as well as we head into the next week. Here's a look in Saskatoon, and then finishing in Winnipeg again. A lot of places having those first 20 degree days of the year and then we look at those overnight lows staying above freezing over the next 7 to 10 days. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll talk to you again on Monday morning.